portable power for bugging out. Hey everybody, I'm Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness and this video is about a product that I wanted to talk about just starting my review of it. Yes, they did send it to me. I did not pay for this with my own money, but this is an honest review with no preconceptions. I don't owe them anything. All I owe them are is a video, which I'm probably gonna do several, because I think this product can be very useful for a uh, multitude of situations. Is it to power your house? No, it is not. It is a portable power station by Opus. And uh, so they sent me out the 1800 watt portable power generator with the two 240 watt solar panels. So I just opened them up. I haven't actually open the solar panels yet. Well, I, I started to open one, then I realized I should show this all in video. So we're gonna start off step by step. Um, I think when the power station arrived, it was 68% charged. So we're gonna start off there. It's a nice sunny day. I'm gonna show you how to put out the solar panels, how I plug it in, and then we're gonna see in a Pacific Northwest, sunny, nice warm day, it's about 75 degrees out, um, how quickly it charges. And that's just one aspect also. Of course, I have to cover, I have to look at how long does it last when I'm charging different things. Uh, I'm gonna be using this portable power station on our um, two week long, um, totally off grid uh, adventure. Doing, We're gonna go through from north to south of Colorado, covering 90% dirt roads, off roads in the mountains. And then we're gonna cut over and we're gonna start from south and go to north all the way through Utah. And it's gonna be pretty much all off pavement. It's part of our overlanding thing that we do as well as bug out scouting and stuff like that. Of course, I'm not gonna bug out all the way to Colorado from Western Washington or Utah. This is more of a overlanding thing for our overlanding channel. If you wanna check that out, um, check out Haven Ridge Adventures here on YouTube. That's our overlanding channel where I'll be talking a lot more about this also, but it has definitely has applications in prepping. So let's stop with all the mess BS. And I don't even know, I haven't read their, their I haven't read um, their points, like their um, information points that they want YouTubers and creators to cover. I know nothing about this product, nothing. I know very little, very little about products like this at all. So, I'm a beginner, just like somebody that received this and knows nothing about it, to set it all up. So let's see how easy it is, and let's start this process of videos talking about does it work, how well does it work, how quick does it charge, how quickly does it discharge, what are the different options for charging, and what all can you, uh, for charging it, and what all kinds of things can you charge with it. So let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about what comes with it. Let me angle this down a little bit so you can see more of it. Um, so you got this. Um, what this does, this plugs into the front of the unit and into a car cigarette lighter slash power port to charge it while the vehicle is running. Great option for bugging out, for overlanding, for anything, any use in a vehicle. Because while you're driving to like your camp spot, you can be charging it with the vehicle. So when you get there, turn the vehicle off, you get a fully charged 1800 watt power station, as long as it works. And we're gonna find out about that. But, so you get this cable here. Um, and this cable, let's see how long it is. Um, and how, you know, cause that depends on where you can place it in the vehicle, which does matter, right? Because you wanna make sure that, so it's not a very long cable. So um, that's one thing. First thing that's, you know, slightly disappointing. I would prefer a longer cable because that would allow me to store this and to charge it while the vehicle's in motion from um, a variety of locations. But what I'll probably end up doing, because I think I know I want this in the back of our 91 Land Cruiser. Um, so what I think I'll probably do is I will get a female um, car charging station like this and I will wire it and mount one of those somewhere in the rear of the vehicle so that so that this cable reaches. Um, so that will mitigate the, pro the problem of this cable being a little short. 
But, so that's a limiting factor right there. I, um, I'll, I'll mention to them, I'm in email contact with them, that it would be nice to offer a longer cord, even if it's an option um, that you got to pay a little bit more for or whatever. I don't know. Um, so there's that. Then there's this. This is the uh, um, power station that goes into the unit and just plugs into a wall socket so you can charge it at home or anywhere where you have 120 volt AC. So it'll charge off of DC from a vehicle or it'll charge off of AC from your house or any other AC station. So, and I haven't tested this out yet at all, like I said. Um, so, and then these are the two uh, 240 watt solar panels and this is the unit. Um, let me, I guess let's just talk about the unit a little bit first. Um, like I said, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what the company has for talking points yet. This is just my first introductory video. But as you can see here, it has the AC outlets. So you can plug an AC, there's something into here that runs AC. Um, it also has USB. Um, I forget the nomenclature. I know these are USB-C. Um, these are just USB. I don't know what they're called. Um, and then this is a 12 volt, 10 amp out. And then this is a 12 volt um, marine plug that has a marine thing. Um, and one thing I did see, I actually, I, I did open, or no, I didn't open the book. On the outside of the box, it showed that it's capable of doing um, 220 or 240, which I don't know. I'll have to test that out. My buddy has a welder, so maybe we'll hook this up to his welder and see how long he can weld on it off of this on one charge. But anyway. You got the power button, you got the inputs. That's where I was talking about, like this cable. It plugs into your uh, power station or your um, car power port that I was talking about is too short. It has plugs in there. Um, so yeah, two inputs. I don't know why you'd ever have two inputs um, because the solar panels have a Y. I guess if you didn't have that Y, um, you could plug them in individually into here. Maybe that would work, but I have a, it came with a little Y thing I'll look at in a sec. I haven't even opened it, it's still in the bag. But um, pretty simple. Uh, let me see, I'll turn it on. And hopefully it'll come on. <laughs> Maybe I need to hold it longer. Like I said, I haven't read the instructions yet. Oh, there you go. You can't really see on screen, but it is 69%. Uh, 69% charged. All right. Oh, there's also this little screen thing here. Maybe if I pull that little thing off, maybe you'll be able to see it on camera. If you can see the 69, maybe. I can't tell if you can see that or not. Anyway, let's just talk, stop the BS talking and stuff like that. Let's see what this thing really does. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video right here and then I'll show you how to lay the solar panels out. All right, so what we got here is a solar panel, as you can see by Opus. So the sun is coming the sun is directly up at that angle to me right now. So I'm gonna shift the camera over here a little bit and um, set these guys up for you guys. All right, I shifted location. So, I, cause I don't know if you saw in the last little section, um, my little one rode by and she needed more room to ride her bike. So this is a perfect location right here out of the way to set up a solar panel. So solar panel, it has a Velcro enclosure like that. So because I'm gonna put the power box over here, the power cord for it is here in the back. So I'm gonna lay, and at first I gotta check, these open that way, those are the stands. So, actually I guess the power cord is, gonna, I'm gonna have to go over this direction. I'm gonna have to move them this direction because that won't work if I go the other direction. And I don't know how long these are, so let's just check it out. You lay it out, lay it out, open it up, like that, there you go. And this protective film, I assume you pull it off. Because that looks like just protective film to me, so let's throw that off. There we go, set up in the sun. But it's not the right angle yet, so let's lift this up. And it has these little things on the back here that open up. They're little stands. So I'll open these up. And there you go. That is pretty much, let me see. Let me shift it kind of that direction a little bit so that it is, 
I'd say that's pretty close to perfect. So that first one is set up. Let me set up the second one, just a sec. All right, so the second one. Pretty simple design, I like that. They seem like they're a pretty decent quality. Um, so I forget if I read on the box or, um, like I said, I didn't open it. I opened the instruction manual for about two seconds. Um, it's supposed to have a 20% um, efficiency, which uh, is pretty good. So we'll see about that. And the last one. All right, there we go. All right, so the panels are set up. But now I need to get the cords out. So there's a little undo the zippers back here. Cord comes out of the little pouch in the back. And undo actually here. While I'm undoing <laughs> While I'm undoing the little, you know, tie that holds up all the wires, and I'll, I'll just undo those. I'll bring the wires up here so you can see them. I don't want to sit here and make the video any longer than I have to, so let's just pause it. One thing I'll show you really quick is see the length of the wire is pretty decent. So it actually reaches, uh, what, another probably three feet past the camera. So pretty nice. Let me get the other one set up. All right, so I have both ends for the panels. And then this little, um, like, uh, Y. So one into two. So seeing as that this is a, oh, okay. See, learning curve. I don't even know what this is yet. There is a different style connector that I don't know if it's on the front of the box. I don't see that style connector on the front of the box. So maybe that's for something else. So for now, I'm just going to set that aside until I figure out whether or not I'm an idiot and not for not knowing what that is or if it's just some kind of special application. So that's why there are two inputs on the front of the box, one for each of the solar panels. Um, and I bet if you needed to add more solar panels, there probably are um, different Ys, you know, different things that you can hook, uh, you know, two, like plug two of these into each one and maybe run four panels. I know they do have um, bigger stations, I believe, that have more panels or something like that. I don't know. So let me go get the box. We'll plug it in. I'll start the timer and I'll see how long it takes to get from the 68% it is to fully charged. All right, so what we got here, I'll pull, hold it up here so you can see, 69%. So that's our starting point. And I will plug this in and I will look at the time. It is 14.01 p.m. right now. So I will plug it in, plug it in, hear that little fan kick in, and it should tell us how many watts are coming in. So let it kind of catch up to itself. So reading backwards, that looks like about 318, 315, whatever watts. Let me see. Input watts, okay. So 221 right now. So I'm going to set this here in the shade. I'll just set it right here. And uh, it's already at 70%. I don't know if you can see that it says 70%, probably not. Um, so... I'll figure out another way to get the screen better so you can see that better. All right, there, now I got it set up where you should be able to see that a lot better. Actually, what I'll do is I'll move it a little bit closer so that we can see it better. There we go. All right, so I believe that setup is pretty decent. You should be able to see fairly well. It is now um, three minutes later, so, or two minutes later, it's been charging for two minutes. So what I'll do is I will let it sit for 10 minutes, 
I will come back and show you guys. See the screen times out. So there you go. It's at 70%, 206 input watts, 212 input watts. You should be able to see that on the screen, I believe. Yeah, it looks like you guys can see that. So I will come back and check it in after 10 minutes expired from the time I plugged it in. And I will check every 10 minutes and show you guys an update of how well it's working. So stand by. So here we are, 10 minutes later. We got 72% and it looks like we got 216 watts of input. So let's give it another 10 minutes. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes. We have 75% charged and 223, 223, good number, right? Of watts coming in. So this is gonna take a little bit, but this is just off of solar. This isn't plugging it in and doing uh, like a fast charge through AC. So yeah, I think it's working pretty well. Um, and I keep on having to move my solar panels because the sun is moving and I'm getting shadows from my house. So I'm keeping a close eye on it though, trying to keep the panels in the sun at all times. It's just, I had the optimum set up earlier, not as optimum now, but it's working well. And why am I doing the review this way? Um, without reading the instructions or knowing their talking points or anything, because I want to look at it as just the average person grabs this, opens it up, how easy is it to use, how you know idiot proof it is. I'm pretty good at figuring out how to do things myself, you know, MacGyvering things, rednecking things, stuff like that. But I just wanted to approach this with zero knowledge. You know, I have no dog in this fight. They're not paying me anything. They just sent this to me. Um, I, I will have a discount code in the description below if you choose to purchase this object, the, the, this item. And what I would do is I would wait until I do some further testing before you actually buy it if and or when I can prove that yes, it does work. So that's something very important. I don't have any dog in this fight. Like I said, I do get the free system and hopefully it works if it works well or to whatever level it does work, it'll probably be very useful for me. But if it's an option for you, I don't know. Further testing is definitely needed. So I'll check back with you guys in another 10 minutes. All right, another 10 minutes has passed. We got 79% and 223 for input watts. So looking pretty good. It'll take, I don't know, seems like it'll take a couple hours maybe for them to fully charge. So how about this time? I'll check back with you guys in about 30 minutes. And then we'll see how well it is working. I'm watering the garden anyway, so we'll get back to you. All right, it's been about 20 more minutes. 87%, 223 watts coming in. I've had to readjust solar panels several times, trying to keep them in full sun, trying to keep optimal conditions just to see how it works in optimal conditions. Um, and this is Western Washington. Sun is pretty good today though, so I would say it's pretty good sun value. So take it for what it is. Check back in about a half hour. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half since we first began. It's at 93%, but I'm only getting 40 watts now because the sun is going, we have trees and a lot of other stuff obstructing the, obstructing the view. So I only have about maybe 40% sun on one panel now and about 20% sun on the other panel. So one panel is probably not doing anything. The other panel is barely putting out any because we're losing sun. So um, hour and a half, it did that much. So looking pretty good so far. So, so far, it looks pretty good. So in an hour and a half, we went from 60, was it 68%? to 95% and that's of 1800 watts. And most of the time you saw when the sun was good, the two 240 watt solar panels were putting out 223 watts, which I'm not a solar expert, but I think that's pretty good, especially for what I think, you know, I think it's pretty good for a portable setup that, you know, you can take out and about bugging out or doing different things like that. So my initial impressions so far are that it would be a pretty effective option. 
um, and that you know so if it was you know if it was drained all the way so we were talking um, 30 percent a little bit less than 30 percent we'll just call it 30 percent because I don't know how long those panels had a lot you know some shade on them so I'll give the benefit of the doubt maybe and say 30 percent in an hour and a half so you know that's pretty decent coming from solar panels um, what I'm gonna do now is I'd like to do this as an in-depth test so this will be video one so video two will be plugging stuff into this what I will do is I'll plug it into the house I'll get it to 100 percent and then what I will do is I will plug in you know I'll plug in like a cell phone charger here maybe something here I'll plug in a couple things over here I'll probably what I'll do is I'll plug in my diesel heater and run it as well as like charge a cell phone maybe charge a laptop um, figure out some other things I can plug into it also and then we'll see how long it lasts from full charge you know down I'll probably only take it down to maybe 50 percent I don't know we'll have to see I want to do a real world test in-depth test of this because I see a lot of people I, I haven't actually watched anybody any el anybody else's um, power station videos but I know people do them all the time I really want to do an in-depth test of them without using talking points and without reading the manual and without you know toting a company line I want to do real world how well does it work solar charging house charging stuff like that so I did the solar charging seems like it's working pretty well next video part two will be draining it down see how long that lasts and then video three will be plugging into the house from however far we drain it down to to see how far how quickly it charges that way and then I will do other parts of the videos on our trip in the out basically in the outback of Colorado and Utah and see how well the other options work in those environments so I love you guys have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours